Well, today we are going to be meeting the person who taught me how to use Notion, and he's going to be teaching you the same thing. First of all, let him introduce himself. So, um, my name is Fabi Luatobiloba Caleb. I'm a 300 level student of Bowen University, and uh, I am a Notion expert in my own world. <laughs> yeah, he is. How are you, first of all? Yeah, I'm doing all right. <laughs> uh, like, I just entered a new level, passed my exams. So, thanks to Notion and God Almighty. So the, 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 notion, the notion helping you? Oh, experience. it's really helped because I, I didn't do a lot of work in terms of reading, but in terms of um, like um, answering questions and and I'm trying to consolidate the little information that I was able to you know read on, it really helped me. So you can see, notion is a very powerful tool yeah, which definitely. every student should be using. So how did you find out about notion? So I found out about Notion when I was about to enter 200 level, like after my 100 level exams. I was looking for an easy way to like, part, like learn medicine, like, like med my medicine gong was supposed to start in 200 level. So I needed to figure out um, a way that could help me like make the stress, like reduce the stress for me in medical school. So I went online going all on about, then I stopped on porn. I'm um, in particular personality on YouTube. That's Ali Abdel. Shout out to him. Shout out to Ali Abdel. <laughs> See this video. The fuck way. You changed my life. Uh, thank you. You changed our lives. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I stumbled upon Ali Abdel. It all started with him talking about us to active recall and all that. Then gradually, I was uh, initially I was using um, OneNote. That way I just put questions down, but I answered them like on. I answered them like analog, based like with sheet of paper. But then he also introduced, over time he introduced Notion, and I saw it, and I, I figured out that it would help me in my medical school, so I decided to like add it to my, my skill set. Okay, so he's going to show you how to set up a Notion page. If you want to use Notion, you can simply go online and type in Notion, N-O-T-I-O-N, -O -O and download it. I'll also leave a link down in the description box so that you can just click on the link and it will take you to both the desktop site for download and also the you can check your app store to type in notion and download the app the notion is free for students, students and once you use your student mail yeah. you can assess all the features which notion has but I, I assessed it with my normal Gmail, so I'm using a free plan still, but it's... I assessed it with my students Gmail, and it's working perfectly in terms of delivering all the functions. What makes Notion stand out to you? Um, what makes Notion stand out to me is that, um, as a person, I'm not like very like organized with my material things. So having notes, having to like... Um, pack up notes would have proven difficult for me like over time. I'm in medical school, I would have a lot of notes. So yeah. I, I thought of that like right from the beginning of 200 level. That's why I said to, the, the initial um, game was to go into digital um, notes taking. That way I can have my, all my notes in a particular place. Then over time, I've been stopping upon Notion, it, uh, it was able to like incorporate the notes taking and the active recall for me together. So it was a place where I could have my notes and I could equally have my active record and where um, structures that I could put in place to make sure that I get the most effective use of that active record in terms of how much I remember so I could like ID answers on that question and like record them then see the question and I could even like you know um, color code them based on the one I don't remember the one I remember and the one that was fair to me so it was really a game changer for me as you said, the notion, notion has a toggle feature, that's what it's called, and the toggle feature helps you, you can use it as a student to write out questions. As I said, active recall is a way of life, is the way you are meant to be studying whatever field you find yourself in, you're meant to be asking yourself questions. And so with Notion, you can easily type in a question and then use the toggle feature to hide in your answer. So Toby is going to be showing us. Okay, so this is how it works. Let me open um, general principles. General principles. Let me go to general principles. Let me open body compartment and body fluid and compartment. 
this was our second topic in general principles. This is how the toggle function works. So th this question now, it says the extracellular fluid is divided into how many subunits. So I'm supposed to name them and state their percentages. So once I open the toggle, I figure out the answer. I answer them before I open the toggle. So once I open it, I see the like, answer to the question. So basically, the um, extracellular fluid has five compartments. And these are all the compartments listed here with their percentages. So depending on if I remember it or I don't remember it, I can color code it to whatever color I like. Right now it's in red because by the time I, by the time I was practicing it, I didn't remember it. So. All right. So as so the the toggle feature can simply be placed into Notion by either typing the slash on your keyboard or just pressing the greater than sign on the keyboard and pressing spacebar. And like that's a shortcut that I use. I don't know that is that what it is. Uh, you I type in. Yeah, I'm not uh, okay. into shortcuts. So like I, I use I use a shortcut so that I can be faster. Windows I press Shift and the greater than sign and then spacebar and then the toggle just immediately appears. So for like someone who is new to Notion and they don't really know the basics of it, can you simply show them how to organize? Like there are various subjects and how to use the toggle feature, but like we just like open a new page and just do something. First of all, if you're going to use Notion, you must like you must be able to define the particular area you want to like use it for. Like the initial reason for me using Notion was medical school, so it was medicine. But over time, it developed to my finances, uh, my journal, uh, my life as an entrepreneur, and other things. So first of all, you must be able to like specify the areas that you want to like, you know, venture, like venture into, like impute notion into. So um, after um, setting up, getting the notion page, registering for it and all, you would there you would always see these um the three three um slash lines at the upper left corner. Uh -huh. So when you click on that, it shows you the major pages. There. These are the pages I've created for myself over time, but then you also be blank. You just have the introduction to, introduction to Notion, I guess. But then there's just like an introduction message on, how, on the few talk, a few notes on what Notion is about. So for me, I deleted that. So basically, um, you must be able to define what you want out of Notion. So right now, I'm going to create a new page. To create a new page, you click on the um, there's, you have the private page and, and the shared page. The shared page is if you have friends that you are working together, so you can share some of your pages with them, whatever pages is you want to share with them. But then I'm working on my private page. So you add a page with the um, addition sign right there. Then it takes you to a new page. So in this new page, you can give it whatever name you want to give. Okay. Being that I'm a medical student, let me take the medical approach to this. I would name mine the medicine. The medicine database. Okay. So it, once you create a new page, you give it whatever name suits that particular reason you are creating it for, like that particular page. A page mm -hmm. should have a reason you are creating it. So whatever reason you, you, for, that you might be creating it, you extract a name out of that reason and give it to it. So I give mine the medicine database. Um, for a page, I like to use um, an empty page. So I start with an empty page. Then depending on what you want to do, there are different functions. You can add tables, you can add boards, you can add um, um, there are various um, functions, but then once you press the yeah, once you press slash, the slash, it gives you the various um, function you need. Or even if you don't press the slash, once you press the addition sign that is close to the um, oh. the, the blinking um, stroke, once you press it, it gives you the various things you can add to it. So for this particular video, I'm going to be adding a table. So this is a table. Okay. So now, 
let's say I'm dedicating this to one, I would pick one of my um, one of the um, subjects in as a medical student, and that would be physiology. I can name this physiology. Then it's important to know that for every um, in the name section for every um, space you see on that is, is a link to another page. So you can see there's an open beside it. So yours is to name the page, open it, and fit in whatever you want to fit in into that page. Okay. In my first year, sorry, my, when I started my medicine proper, last in my second year, the first topic we went into was um, we did general principles. And the first topic we did in general principles was the cell. So okay. I imposed the cell. That is the first topic. So once I open it, that is another page itself. Okay, good. So, so Notion has this. Why Notion is very good, why I also love Notion, is this feature, the ability to open a page and have pages inside, those page, inside that page. So everything is like an interconnected network of information that you need for yourself. Sure. And that is how our brain works. Our brain connects neurons to, to one another when they experience new information. Your brain tries to connect past events to current events. And so with this, with Notion being, making, bringing it out for you, it means you can easily connect your notes together and say oh this is the broader picture of what i'm studying and you know it helps it just going to help you organize gets very organized so basically this is the page for the cell um i don't want to go too deep into the inner workings because i don't want the video i won't want to like spend too much time but then for me when i started using notion it was difficult at the beginning but over time you develop experience. You no, know, no, you can't learn this thing in one yeah. day. Over time you develop it. experience with the notion, and you just see that your your um your um ability to to use the app gets better and better over time, and you're going to improve on um the way you organize your information. Basically, this is like um an abridged version of how you create a page on Notion. So um whatever it is you want to impute in this, it can be your notes. For me, I would. Now this is to input stuff. You push the slash. When you put the slash, you bring out functions. So I'll put, I'll use. For me, if I was creating a page, I'll use um, a heading two. Heading, heading one, two, and three just describes the different font size. So heading two will be like a middle font. So I'll use that. Mm -hmm. So when I use that, I I use the cap lock. So I put my content of study. Once I put my content of study, I go on that and I name. You can use a numbering system. You use a slash. To, the slash is a very important part of your notion. So once I am calling, they can use a numbers, numbered list. So once I use a number list, I can impute the different content of study. For the cell, I don't want to go too <laughs> into the uh, workings of the cell. So let's just leave uh, it that way. So whatever content of study it is, as to whatever topic that pages you will improve the content of study then Honda is I like to use like being that I'm a person that believes in active recall I also use another um Eden and I put my active recall questions so that way when I read very the paragraph or um, a particular subtopic I develop questions out of it once I develop questions out of it I, I write those questions though I don't have to write those questions down. It's a toggle function. So the toggle uh -huh. function is still the slash. Wait, wait, before you go on, okay. what, what, what do you put under your content of study? Is it like um, the topics underneath it or like the study objectives? Like what you I, need I, to know? I, 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 like? It's not the, not the study objective, just the, like whenever I pick up a new subject, I like to, I don't like to be like in the waters. I like to like have a big picture of what the entire thing is. Mm -hmm. So whenever I go into a new um, topic, I first figure out what that topic is composed of, so that we organize them into different subtopics, so that I can um, I can very well define my my progress. So for cell now, I'll put the different part of cell, so that we I know we should cell, cell membrane, cell the cytoplasm, theory, yeah, the nucleus, yeah. Yeah. so that puts it that way. So once I organize the information that way, and it makes it makes the organization of information better because in my active recall too. That is 
this is the content of study I will use as a toggle to put the questions under. Yeah. So it makes the whole process easier. Like now, if I put the first content of study as the cell membrane, once I get to my active recall, I create a toggle list. The name of the toggle will be my first um, context of study. That will be the cell. I usually like to put it um, in a bold font. So that will be the cell membrane. Once I pick the cell membrane, then now I can now write my questions on there. And that still works with the toggle function. So it's always a question of it could be what is the cell membrane. Then the answer goes under. I write the answer. So that way I have the answer inbuilt inside the questions. So once I'm trying to um, revise my information, it's not like I'm rereading. Like Kali Bida would say, rereading is like a very inefficient way of learning. It's very passive. Yeah. As, of, I've made a video on this. Like, just go back and watch that video. Yeah. Let it. It's a battle between, between, you. between recognizing and remembering. When you yeah. read, you're recognizing the information. When you like, Answer questions. It brings out the, the it brings the remembrance to it. Please watch the video. It's very very important. Just remember questions. If you don't ask yourself questions, you never know how to answer those questions. So it's better for you to ask yourself questions when you are not in the exam hall, so that you can in the exam hall or when it's time to for a test, you can easily answer them immediately. You see the questions again. So now, what is the sum membrane? The, the answer can just go below this. So membrane is the um, bilipid layer and all that. So then let me go into that. So <laughs> that will go under it, and that way the information can be enclosed in the toggle. So once I'm revising, let's just type type it in so that like, okay. you, you would see it. The cell membrane mm -hmm. is a phospholipid layer that contains. Content. So, that's just the definition that is in my head right now. So once I put it in, if I'm revising, okay, what is the cell membrane? The cell membrane is a phospholipid barrier that encloses the content of the cell. I see that in my head, or I write it down, preferably. So once I open it, I see that I'm correct. Then I can. These are functions that you learn with time, developing your experience. I use this. I put put on the color function based on the fact that I answered this well. I give it a green background. So when I'm coming back to um, revise again, I can let myself know that, okay, this question, you got it the last time. So you don't need to place too much emphasis on these particular questions. So I'm more focused on the questions that, let's say the next question I give was, I should explain the mosaic, stru the mosaic, um, the mosaic structure of the cell membrane. So if I cannot answer that, um, don't let me, just let's leave it that way. But I could not answer that, which I don't remember now. I'll color code it um, red. So that way, I know that this is a question I could not answer well, um, the last time I practiced this set of questions. So it just helps me to like, like be able to distinguish between the information that I don't know and the information I know. Because many times people are just revising what they, reading they, 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 yeah, exactly. They, and most most people won't like reading what they read already before, know. what they already know. Yeah. They just keep on reading the same thing, Change, and then yeah. they leave out the parts where they are deficient in. So for, for someone that is a little like me, I can't <laughs> like involve myself in such like process with the least time I have to work. Like, huh? So the least time I have to work, I have to make it as efficient as possible. So this is the way I make it as efficient as possible. So that way, when I come back to it, I know that I know the set of questions I'm supposed to place more emphasis on, and the set of questions that I believe I'm, I've built capability in, like in terms of ensuring. So, um, if you want to go more into Notion, Notion has a page on YouTube where they give lectures on how to use it. So, whatever you learn from it, you can incorporate it into the way you want to structure your Notion. But I think everyone should use Notion. It's, it's, not, only the, it's not only about schoolwork, so even um, in your en entrepreneurship life, in a group, in, in, in situations where it involves a group of people, that you want information to be well organized using the shared page function. Do I, can I use the shared page function? Yeah, you can use the page function. Okay. I, I use the shared page function. Shout out to my friend, Alao Daniel. We created my, medical, my medicine database together. Uh, we, we use the shared function in terms of um, Notion. If, as you can see, my medicine database is in my shared function. 
So I share it with my friend that we created it together, Allah with Daniel. Yes. So, so, so like when you share that, is it that he like he makes a set of um a page and then you make your own page? No, it, the, it is the same page. Oh, it's the same page. Just so depending on, I can give him. There are various levels of um abilities that he can perform if it is me sharing the page. The page has okay. a primary owner, so the oh, primary okay. owner can de- can dictate the particular um the level of changes that that person can perform on that particular page. So now during our 200 level um, comprehensive exams, the exams I just passed by the grace of God. Thank God. Um, we created a medicine database in a, in a way that's in preparation for the exam. So due to the fact that the work was voluminous, mm-hmm. we was able to like treat other parts of medicine and I'll do other parts. So he was creating questions on parts where oh. so that we I don't have to like create questions on this part again. So I could easily just go and go answer on. questions. And answer so I didn't even need to burden myself with writing notes. All I had to do was read. Once I read, I just go and answer questions. Mm-hmm. The questions he has said. And once he also reads, he answers the question I said. So that we were able to finish faster. Yeah. So that's the reason for the shared page. So that's that's another very wonderful feature in Notion, the shared pages. I just learned about this today and well, it shows that if you have someone who you study with, or group, just another person, because so many yeah, you people, don't want it to be, it to be, it to be disorganized so anyway. much, so much people should not be involved in it because it's going to get so disorganized. <laughs> so I like, can get someone who would be studying a different thing, typing out questions, and also you, you'll be typing out questions, so that when you just finish, instead of you going through the whole process of creating everything individually you already have this division of labor which will reduce the workload for you and also help you do other things with your life like make youtube videos and, and besides you may be scared that um how would i use the color code function at least to define what you got wrong and what you didn't get wrong if you are sharing a page the thing is that if i'm working on a particular subject i have my meeting database but then if i'm working on a particular subject that relates to my medicine database okay let me pick the cell page for example once the shared the share the cell page is what i share not the medicine database i share the cell page so you only get access okay. to the cell page whoever i'm sharing with gets access to the cell page so once you finish organizing information together on that cell page we can du- duplicate the page in a way that each person has his or so, hers mm-hmm. so that way you can have your own personal work on that particular that page. It's just to help reduce the burden of certain questions if you are involved, in which I believe you should incorporate into your study routine, answering questions, to share the burden of certain questions in a way that after you're done, you duplicate the page so that each person in the group has his own personal one and are able to like use the color code function to um, assess themselves. Notion is a very powerful tool and there, there are so many things you can do with so Notion. Many, yeah. I use my Notion for my YouTube, for planning out my YouTube videos. I use my Notion for making sure I read my Bible every day and fill in a my Bible journal is in, in Notion. Um, my reading list and things I learn are in Notion. Almost my, my almost my whole life is migrating towards Notion right now and the world is going digital. And someone might be like, I don't know how to type. I actually don't know how to type that fast too. But typing is a skill that you would learn when you know that Notion is a very wonderful tool and you need to use it. Uh, uh, uh. You, you know, even for me, while using Notion, I could not type well at the beginning. But over time, having used Notion for, I think, um, this is like going to two years now. You, the, the typing speed is like you get you know now once you start doing something over yeah, time you, you begin to like get get accustomed to it so muscle memory over time yeah exactly so over time you get used to the typing experiences and in the aspect of the different pages he's talking about initially for me it started as just medicine but now it's my goal and tax my journal um my entrepreneur dream the content and consume my creation like i, I actually I tell myself this year i want to be doing things so like putting myself out there that's the reason i'm here so yeah. uh, my context creation project like i believe that in order to learn you have to like have something you want to create because it makes it easier to know what you want to learn that way um, i'm able to like organize all the different areas of my life into notion so it's a very very good um application and trust me you would achieve m- more in the few time using this application i i hope you've been able to like learn something and learn how powerful Notion is the all-in-one workspace. 
Another wonderful thing about Notion is that it syncs to all your devices. So I can set all those questions on my laptop, and because my laptop is too large for me to be carrying around, I can just download the Notion app and exactly, sync yeah. it. So I can just be walking on the road and I pull up my phone, open the Notion app, answer some questions. questions, and be like, oh, 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 oh. It's a sweet experience. It's, 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 very, it's very convenient and I'm sure you would love it. You might you might have difficulties at the beginning and you should go on YouTube, search Notion tutorials, yeah. how to do things on Notion, go to the Notion page, check things, check things, look for ways to make things easier for yourself and I'm sure you'll get the hang of Notion and you would enjoy and love using Notion. Even for whatever niche you are like involved in these meetings, I trust you that there's somebody on YouTube that is into that and is using Notion. That's how Notion yeah. is going. You, you can you can you can type in engineer how does engineering student Notion. use Notion? How do trust me, medical students how do law students use Notion? I know that it's it's proved quite difficult at the beginning. But just like stick with it for please just try it in three months and see how much you would have developed. Yeah. Initially for me it was tedious because I had to like put my head around how to organize information. Like it troubled me for like a month. Still but then, me yeah. It will, but once you like pass that threshold, boom, the, the growth just becomes very exponential. And so it becomes like let, let let this be a challenge to you. Use Notion for three months and if you hit it, get throw it away from your life. But you won't eat it. <laughs> I'm very sure you will hate it because it's a very lovely tool. So that, that that's that comes to the end of the video. Toby, thank you for explaining this whole please, notion please. thing because I, I I can't do it on my own. <laughs> and 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 now I want to, I want to like give um, a shout out to my friend Allow Daniel that I talked about. He is a very big part of my notion page. Thanks to him, I've been able to like for them my experience with it and even put of us yeah in groups you grow together you grow a lot more like when you are using notion in groups because so you discover that other people learn certain things that they can teach you so certain things that you learn it teaches me things that i learn i teach him so it's a very good experience as a group so shout out to him hello daniel <laughs> so get get a notion partner and if you want to be my partner so come on just tell me let's let's <laughs> i'm also looking for a notion partner so that yeah I, I hope I'll find one soon. Any point in time, I hope he starts yeah. soon. And when he starts, I would I would try to leave a link to yeah. his page and pin it so probably, that in the comment with section. Probably start with a blog. A blog. I think the video is a very huge step for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll pin it and check you, it you should always check it out Please. and and learn from. Trust me, you'll be blessed from him. You you surely be blessed. Yeah. Thank you. So remember to stay legendary. By the way, this is part of a bigger project called Beyond Ordinary Students Show. And I'll be bringing up many other students who will talk about different aspects of life as students because our life is not simply just about studies. There are also many things that revolve around us. So stay tuned. Um, it's going to start premiering around July by the grace of God. And that's that. By the way, subscribe, like, share this video. If you found yes. help, is share it to every single person. The more you subscribe, the easier it is for me to get Ali down. Please, <laughs> please. <laughs> so, so you know, share it around and thank you, Notion. Thank you, Ali Abdal, and thank you, Toby. Once yeah, again, I'm very happy to do this. Very, very happy to do this. Please use Notion. Please. Yeah, use Notion. I, I think that's how it just ends this video. Yeah. <laughs>